I will do everything I can to bring this country together. Thank you. Do you think that the U.S. can repair the damage that Donald Trump has done? Can they do it quickly and easily? And, and how would you go about it? The answer is I think yes. I think it will be difficult, and I really do think it will require extraordinary leadership. I think what Trump did in the 2016 campaign is rather intelligently uh, pick up on the fact that there were tens and tens of millions of people in this country who are suffering, who are in pain, who are going nowhere in a hurry, are seeing a decline in their standard of living, seeing a decline literally in their life expectancy, worried about their kids, and they're looking around them and they're saying, who is concerned about me? Democratic establishment worried about my kids, they're worried that I'm working for nine bucks an hour, that I don't have any health care, uh, that my kid can't go to college, and he played on that. Now, he turned out to be a fraud and a liar, but he certainly exposed, I think, the weakness of the Democratic and the political establishment in general, including the Republican establishment. There's been a lot of focus on a $15 minimum wage, but how does the federal government, how can you create more $30 an hour jobs, well, $45 right. an hour jobs? That's right. I mean, no one, I am, you know, and again, I, I, if I'm allowed to toot my own horn here, horn here uh, when I was here four years ago and I talked about a $15 minimum wage, uh, everyone thought that I was kind of extreme. Uh, since then, seven states, including this state, have passed $15 minimum wage, as has the U.S. House of Representatives. So your point is well taken. Uh, nobody should think for one moment that, ah, we got a $15 hour minimum wage, we solved our economic problems. It is a minimum. It is a minimum. And I have been to this state, I've been to Iowa, needless to say, in New Hampshire. You do talk to people. I'll never forget a woman in Des Moines, Iowa, making $10.25 an hour trying to raise three kids. She can't. All right. So I'm not here to tout that $15 an hour minimum wage is the end of the world. It's not. But it is the minimum. We have to do that. The question of how we create good paying jobs is your question, $25, $30 an hour jobs, is, is the more important question. Uh, I think one way we do that, and obviously it's going to be a combination of federal policy and, and the private sector. As President of the United States, uh, what I will do is demand and do everything that I can to end the kind of corporate greed and irresponsibility that we see right now. Uh, we were just over in San Bernardino, we had a rally there yesterday, uh, where uh, Amazon apparently has a lot of influence there. There's a lot of pollution and kids come down with asthma and all that stuff. And people in the warehouses are making 11 to $12 an hour, while Amazon is a, as you know, an enormously profitable corporation that paid zero in federal income taxes last year. So I think what a progressive president has got to do is say to these corporations, you know what, make money, that's great, create jobs, we want you to do that. But it cannot just go to CEO compensation or your stockholders. You have got, we have got to break this mentality which has been prevalent for so many decades that the only thing that a corporation has to do is make as much money as possible for its stockholders and pay its CEOs outlandish levels of compensation. And we have to do it culturally and we have to do it legislatively to say, you know what, make money, that's fine. You want to be rich, that's fine. But you cannot have it all. You can't break unions or, or, or deny workers the right to join a union. You can't continue to harass women on the job. You can't pay abysmally low wages and expect you know, to be treated respectfully by the federal government. You're going to have to be good corporate citizens. You can't shut down plants in America and move to low-wage countries. You have a certain responsibility. Senator, you, you've made your, your position on President Trump quite clear. I want to ask you, is there anything that he's done, any policy that he has, any action that he's taken that you think is worthy and is worth building on? I have such contempt for somebody who is trying intentionally to divide this country up based on the color of people's skins or where they came from or their religion or their sexual orientation that that disgusts me so much that it's you know so in the midst of of that uh <clears throat> and somebody was a you know it is a pathological liar uh and it was a corrupt person i mean 
He has talked about the need for infrastructural repair. Yes, that's true. Has he done anything? No. Uh, he's talked about the need to lower the cost of prescription drugs. Has he taken on the pharmaceutical industry? No, he has not. He has talked about trade policies. And, 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 and in fairness, probably what has recently happened is probably modestly better than the previous NAFTA. So you want to give him credit, and, and the Democrats in the House credit for that, fine. Uh, but I think the overwhelming uh, results of his administration is, is, is contemptible. President Trump's approach to homelessness has been pretty much to scapegoat homeless people themselves and vaguely hint he would move them all into a big empty federal building. How would you address homelessness? There is so much work to be done in this country. I mean, starting with childcare, starting with health care, where we need more doctors, we need more nurses, we need people who are not pushing paper but providing care to older people. Um, we have a proposal that would build 10 million units of housing. And in terms of low-income housing, I'm proud to tell you uh, that I co-sponsored successfully with Barbara Lee of Oakland. Uh, it was called the Low Income, I think I always forget the name, it was Low Income Housing Trust Fund or something, which Obama's people put, I, I think, several hundred million dollars into, nowhere near enough. But it was the first piece of legislation to actually address low-income housing. But to answer your question, uh, and I've learned, as you travel around the country, boy, you, do you learn this. The housing crisis is not just in LA, it's not just in San Francisco or Seattle. Uh, it is virtually in, in almost every part of the country. And that has to do not only with homelessness, which is a disgrace, about a half a million people are homeless in America. It has to do with the fact that 18 million families are spending 50% of their income in housing. It has to do with gentrification all over this country, which are driving rents up uh, to, uh, to levels that, that working families just cannot afford. Um, we have a, a, a proposal that would build some 10 million units of housing and put a hell of a lot of people back to work uh, at good wages, union wages. Okay, well thank you so much, and I'd be happy to go. Yeah, let's do it quickly.